Radio Shouty. What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? Of course, you know it's your fault. Be high ready, yo. Shout in. Stepping in the building. I got a new artist that's tearing up the streets as we speak. Rennie Rucci, what's good with it, sis? <laughs> Nothing much. It's big, Rennie. The biggest. I'm Come on now. The biggest. I can definitely dig that. <laughs> now, I mean, this new single with Kevin Gates, man. Hands on your knees. First of all, that visual is off the damn chain. The song going hard as hell. Can you tell me how y'all put that banger together? Uh, he actually already had the record. Like, what? Well, the hook and everything ready, and uh-huh. he wanted to put a female on it, mm-hmm. which was like a year before I even cut it. Yeah. So I think I was really just, it took me so long to do it because I was still finding myself as an artist. And luckily, like, he was just one of those genuine people who really wanted to, like, see me do well. So yeah. he held the record for me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you almost I got blessed. This. I got blessed. <laughs> um, but when I did it. Yeah. I'm glad I did wait because I knew who I was. I knew how to, like, my delivery was there. Like, mm-hmm. I had worked on my craft. So yeah. it came out to be the hands on the knees we have now. Exactly. Talk about that video, though. Because, I mean, you danced your ass <laughs> off in that video, and that video's out the damn chain. Okay, so originally both of us were supposed to be in the video. Yeah. But, you know, scheduling and all of that. And when you got a single that's done dropped and you done waited for go. a while, you got to. Because yeah. them visuals mean a lot mm-hmm. for it to really have the legs and need. Yeah. So I'm like, man, listen, we just going to have to thug it, and we going to have to do one and make it work. <laughs> so I, I got to pull all the stops out. Like, that's right. I need people to watch the video, and by the end of it, be like, damn, I didn't even notice he wasn't in it. Facts. So that was, but that's con- how I was. The concept was really still the same. The concept was supposed to be like a Pandora's box in a sense, and you know, me and Emil was supposed to go in, or that's why we had the dancers there, you know, to, to kind of like help with the storyline because it was supposed to be different. Say me in the same character in those different scenes yeah. versus the dancers there, and mm-hmm. it kind of would have told the story better. But I feel like the way it came out was just even just as great. Fire as hell. Yeah. So now, Rennie, how long have you been down with the music, though, sis? Like I've been a serious artist for three years, mm-hmm. but you know, music. We from the south. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Talk to me about being from the Carolinas with it, and how you found yourself in the A. Um, I really just moved here for real, like. Seven months, seven, eight months ago. Yeah, I have been going back and forth. Like when I signed with Wolfpack, I've been going back and forth because I'm not a city girl. Like I'm, Mm. I'm from the country. Like in the Carolinas, I'm from the dirt roads. Like (laughs) I'm really a like a country girl. Like we climb trees and we pick plums and scuff and eyes and you know, like that's just what I'm used to. I'm not used to like it still being light outside when you turn all the lights in your house on. I'm not used to still hearing (laughs) sirens and. You know, my Good cousin shots. ain't around the corner. Yeah. I can't. I wasn't well, used to it, so it took me a long time. And then I have kids. Like, I really believe in stability. Yeah. I ain't, I don't like it out here, so I know damn well I wasn't going to bring my... Not like that, but I think I need to be on the outskirts. I feel that. I yeah, feel so that. Yeah, so, like, just adjusting was hard for me. So, mm. I, I didn't want to bring my kids into that, and then we don't have no family here mm. or whatever. So, that's what took me so long to move. Yeah. Um, and I ha- kind of had to just bite the bullet. I still didn't bring my kids here full time. They yeah. come every other weekend. Okay. And, you know, because I'm, I'm working. You damn so right. So, I ain't really home anyway, and I don't know nobody here. I don't trust people with my kids. I me got either. family there, you know. Yeah. It just, but it was at the right time. I moved here at the right time for my career. Yeah. If I had to move here before, I think. I probably would have got, like, lost. That happens, too, now. I mean, folks come down here to this city and wind up in the middle of a whole bunch of shit, too. Yeah, I think I think it worked because when I moved here, I knew who I was as an mm. artist. Yeah. When I was coming back and forth, I was figuring it out. Like, mm-hmm. I just, I didn't even really realize I was an artist until maybe uh, opening up for Cardi B on Mother's Day in South Carolina. Like, oh. I didn't like it really didn't hit me until I was on that stage and I saw all those lights on me and like yeah. people at my home like I don't have to rap they singing the song word for word like you know that was one moment what really like showed me like oh you rap for real exactly <laughs> You damn right um so I'm glad I waited until I had those type of moments mm-hmm. to move here because here I know I'm here to work yeah. I ain't here to get caught up in Atlanta facts did you get a chance to holler at Cardi when you opened up for her that night? No, I didn't. Are you because serious? I had to leave. It's, I didn't even get to watch her perform. What? I had a show like two hours away from there that same night, so I had to leave literally. So you was really on your day. rapper shit that day? Yeah. <laughs> Every day, every day, we ain't doing this for nothing now. Thanks. I know a lot of girls out here might be doing this for fun, and I ain't knocking y'all have y'all fun, enjoy y'all life, but this is really my career. Exactly. Like, I take this serious. So now, 
being over there in the Carolinas with it, making it do what it was supposed to, what was it like growing up for you? And what was that point that you realized that you wanted to get into the music, though? Um, well, I love growing up in the Carolinas. Mm-hmm. Period. I'm with you. <laughs> um, but as far as the music, like, I've always listened to music, like, it's therapeutic for everybody. I think everybody say that, or in some type of way. It might not be the same kind of music, but, you know, Music is an outlet for yeah. however you're feeling, whatever you're going through. It tells stories. They make you feel something, even if they ain't talking about nothing. I could put yeah. somebody on right now, and they mumbling the whole record, but that <laughs> motherfucker made me feel yeah. something. Yeah. So, you know, it was always that. Um, coming up, I was, like, in journalism and stuff, and I wrote yeah. for the newspaper. I was into poetry and mm-hmm. all that. So writing was never a problem. Yeah. My kid's dad mm-hmm. was my first boyfriend. Uh-huh. So I'm like... 14, 15, and he got his mama computer and everything in the little back room. With <laughs> and that the thing jamming. So I'm recording him. I'm yeah. learning how to record. So one day I'm just joking, like, I'm going to get on the song. This can't be that hard. Ooh. Like, <laughs> And we did a song together. Yeah. And I never did a song again for, like, a few years. But it was, like, it just kept coming to me. Mm-hmm. Like, no matter whether I was trying and it wasn't the right time, it kept coming back. So I'm like, this must be what I'm supposed to do. Exactly. What does he have to say now when he see you over here blowing up, going crazy? Um, I'd like to think he proud of his baby mama. Yeah. <laughs> I would like to think that. You know, yeah. I don't know. We don't necessarily speak all the time. No, I be, I be. So now, I understand that you was dancing for a little while while mm-hmm. you was in there. Talk to me about that. What was the music that really got you going? And then also, how did that impact you creating music, knowing what got the party started, though? See, when I'm looking for them them ones, uh-huh. I always think, would I have danced to this? Exactly. Would this song have made me a bag? Yeah. Because my set used to go like, all right, I'm going to come in, Dreams and Nightmares going to play. Ooh. That's what I'm going to start it off with. Okay, then. That's going to set the tone. Okay, then. Then we got to hit them with the bankroll, fresh and dope, boy, nothing. We got oh, to go there. Ooh, low live we, friend. We got to go there. We got to hit that future mask off. Like, ooh. Shit. Yeah. yeah I did the, feature sets, though. So, yeah. you know, I really had... Strategic. We got the climb. We we got to start you up. Yeah. We got the climax. Wind it down. Get them last couple of dollars. Out. Here we go. Let's. Get, <laughs> you know I can get a little scent. Yeah. What's left? Like let's get it. Come on. Cause after I get off the stage, I'm done. Come on now. <laughs> so now you say I heard you was talking on rolling out saying that your music was featured in P Valley too. Yeah. What was that like when you saw that your music was that a full circle moment though in that thing? It, it was, but I didn't really catch the whole circle because <laughs> I couldn't watch P Valley. Why? I want to watch it so bad, but I feel like it just is going to make me like reminisce about the club too much. Mm-hmm. All right, so, I mean, everybody go to the strip club, but it's yeah. a difference when you standing in a pile of 20000 of your own. Like, it's a Ooh. difference, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. looking at that, it's just like, damn, that's kind of hard. Though. <laughs> They've been getting high. You fool, like. Oh my God! It's like taking a rehabilitated, you know, yeah. street pharmacist exactly and putting him around his old product. What you Facts. gonna do? Hey, man, go get busy. So and I, I don't mean, even want to have them thoughts. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, I don't even want to have them thoughts. I, I watched the little clips where my what they were tagging me. Yeah. I watched them. Yeah, I, I tried. I went to go watch one episode after that. I was like, man, this is torture. I can't do this. Answer me this: What was it that made you leave, though? I, my kids. Yeah. Um, And just wanting more for myself. Like, mm-hmm. everybody know the money in the club is good, but it's the same as the streets. Like, mm-hmm. you're supposed to get what you can and go somewhere else. You're supposed to build off of it. Yeah. Um, I see a lot of girls, even now, in there with no exit strategy, no no thought of yeah. what's next. Like, yeah. it's always, I'm going to go to the mall today, I'll make that back tonight. You know, and I, I never was that. I never could be that. I've been a mom for half my life. Yeah. The other half, I was a kid. I feel you. Like, I had them babies early. Yeah. So I've never had the same mindset as other people. But, you know, I kind of did catch myself falling into, like, I do, I'm making money and I got it and I can take care of my kids. But what else? Yeah. Like, what am I going to do when I can't do this no more? Exactly. I needed an exit strategy. I needed something to build off of, something for them to be proud of. What really hit me, though, was career day. Ooh. Ooh. So everybody, you know, got career day. And yeah. They kids can talk about what they mama and they daddy do, and my kids don't say nothing. Ooh. I feel you on that. So how did that impact you, though, when that kind of hit you? What was going through your mind when you said, okay, here come career day and my kids can't say nothing? They, honestly, it wasn't even a discussion. They, my kids were so playing with it. They was like, mom, we ain't even going to school today. Like, 
<laughs> we ain't even go. I'm like, nah, y'all going to school? Like, why you say y'all ain't going to school? And I, I knew career day was coming up that week, but I didn't realize it was that day. And I'm like, wait a minute, y'all know what I do? I really didn't realize. Like, yeah. Oh no, your kids pay attention. These oh, kids no, they know. watching you. Oh, like, yeah, they it know. don't matter how many times you tell them you a bartender. <laughs> <laughs> Bartenders don't leave out here with that big gym bag. Exactly. So answer me this though: What was the most money that you made in the night, and how did you feel when you saw that money coming in? Though the most money I made in the night would have probably been a loan, mm. fifteen. Ooh. Black bike week. Ooh. Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. My last bike week dance. Oh. What was going through your mind when you saw that 15? So, I mean, you took that last 15 and ran with it. I didn't even realize that was my last time dancing, for real. It was like I was making my exit strategy for the club, yeah. but I hadn't really put it into play yet. Like, I was I was pursuing music, seriously. Mm-hmm. I was investing into myself. You know, I was taking those steps, but I was still hustling. Mm-hmm. So, it came to a point where the beat, jacking the beats and stuff had got me so popping out yeah. here. I was getting booked to rap. And I never had a free weekend to work because I was Ooh. always Friday, Saturday rapping. Friday, and those was really the only nights I worked, Friday, yeah. Saturday. Sunday for my kids. I don't work through the week. I'm a mom. Exactly. That was just how I played it. Unless it's a big event, you know, big events. You got to exactly. show up. Yeah, or a booking or something, you know. But by the time I had a free weekend, I had already signed with Wolfpack. Yeah. I would have looked crazy going in somebody's club paying a tip out. Facts. And that's when it hit me like, oh. Your career has changed. <laughs> Your occupation is different. 